Hello everyone, so welcome back to my channel. This is the Metatron speaking and today we're gonna have a lot of fun We're gonna watch together some videos which are really into hardcore fantasy. These are really really fun Like these things in these videos what happens is The what sorry? Do you what? What do you mean they're not fantasy? Are they not from the Lord of Rings? I thought they were from the Lord of Rings They're for real Brace yourselves. Welcome back. So, please see for yourself what I'm talking about. Here it is. Here's an example of how to deal with two attackers. As the first attacker comes in, all right, we wanna, we wanna catch again, just like we explored in the basic blocks, all right, more or less. And then from there, we could let it go, okay? I'm really just walking and trying to bring the opponents together, right? While using my, my blade as, as a kind of shield, right? Okay, keeping myself safe at all times. So that's one example of how to deal with two attackers. Right, now that you have seen it, I thank you for watching and I'll see you tomorrow for my next video. Goodbye. What? No, no, I can't, I can't talk about this. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't make a video about this. No, 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 I can't. I can't. No, I can't. I, I know. I, I know. I can't do it. No, because you see what the problem is. I love swords too much. I love history too much. And that's when my Italian blood gets all pumped and freely running. I don't want to see you if you can keep calm with all that diluted pizza running freely in your veins. So I can't keep calm. And yes, sometimes when I get upset, I also get sarcastic. I'll give you that, I'll give you that. But some people in my debunking series, you know what, they, what they've been telling me? They've been telling me that I am scornful, presumptuous, arrogant, insolent, disdainful, contemptuous, cynical. Good vocabulary, by the way. I need to say, like, as an English teacher, I gotta say, you've got a nice vocabulary there. Defiant. What? You want me to do it? Okay, but fine, fine, I'll make it. No, 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 I'll make the video, fine. Okay, I'll do it. I'll make the video, all right. Brace yourselves. Try to keep it civil. All right, please show me. Let's see the first clip. What is a katana? A katana is a medium length uh, blade that is very fast and is designed to be used uh, with a two-handed grip as opposed to the one-handed grip of the classical Western swords and really began around the Momoyama period. Momoyama period, like, hold on a second. Momoyama period, or Azuchi Momoyama, it's like late 16th century. So he's saying that katana were invented in late 16th century. For what I've said, perhaps I didn't understand, maybe I got it all wrong. But as far as I know, the transition between Tachi to Uchigatana and Katana, we're talking about Muromachi period. Um, and it's still used today, although not on the street in Japan. Thank you. Oliver, can I call you Oliver? Thank you for that. Lads, no problems. Now you can all book your tickets to Japan, go around, go to the supermarket. Don't worry, people are not wearing katana anymore. You will be fine. Thank you for that, really appreciate. Um, and in certain circumstances, I'm sure are still um, carried around as actual weapons here or there. The what, sorry? What, what did you just say? I don't know, where is he living? What, what Japan is he talking about? Um, here, this is a boken, a wooden sword, and actually classically was even used um, as a weapon itself um, by people that couldn't have a real blade um, and was used quite effectively. Um, there's many stories uh, about uh, people prevailing in battles using um, wooden swords. <clears throat> Right, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt here because I'm a gentleman. I hope that with the word battle, he meant a duel. Because we all know the story of Miyamoto Musashi and how good he was using the Bokken or Bokuto and how he could win uh, samurai in actual duels. But if by battle, my goodness, he meant war, which is actually what a battle is, a battle is in a war. If he's talking about armies and he's talking about stories of samurai winning loads of battles with only wielding a wooden katana already the idea of a samurai going into battle wielding a katana is bullshit. 
because samurai wielded bows and pole arms. We said it loads of times. It was a backup weapon. Full stop. But now even the idea of winning battles with a wooden sword. What stories, mate? Anime don't count. One example of how you could use the sword uh, not just as a cutting tool but also as a shield because in Japanese uh, history there are no shields. The sword is actually used as a shield as well. Okay, I'll try to keep calm now, let's keep my decency. Shields. I have already made actually two videos on shield usage in Japan and how much this is a huge misconception that it's very strange to hear an expert talk about it. Japanese used shields, okay? I've got all the documentation and information in the video so you will find it in the description below if you want to know more about it. But the, already the idea of Japanese not employing shields in, on the battlefield is wrong. Right, I'll give you that Japanese didn't use shields on the battlefield as much as we did in Europe in the Middle Ages or perhaps in classical times between Rome, Roman history and Greek history, okay? But the Japanese did use several types of shields on the battlefield and when they didn't use shields, the katana was not used in st as a shield. That wouldn't make any sense. It would be the stupidest thing to do in the world to use a katana as a shield. This was the shield of a samurai on the battlefield. This is the sode, the pauldron, right pauldron of the armor. This is a 16th century version of the Tose Gusoku, um, or modern armor. If we, if we look at earlier examples, you can see how even more resemblant of a shield actually was in the Oyoroi, for example. These are shields, because a shield is something on the battlefield that needs to protect you from missile fire, from arrows, and a katana cannot protect you from arrows on the battlefield. These will. So let's just explore some basic uh, blocks, if you will. Downward strike. So he's coming in. I'm just going to catch it here at the suba, okay? And then I'm going to parry around, okay? And come in for an attack. Catch the sword at the tsuba. Apart from the fact that this uh, person here helping you out, um, I'm very sorry for him. I'm very sorry because he clearly doesn't want to be there. I mean, look at him. Look how sad he is. It doesn't even believe in what you're talking about. It's quite clear. So, I support you, mate. All is gonna be fine, don't worry. But apart from this, look at this man. He is moving incredibly slowly, and okay, they're moving slowly to show the move, but have I seen once one of these masters pretending, showing us one of these techniques during sparring with a person who doesn't want you to do it, a person who tries to hit you really, not a person who's gonna put himself in the perfect position for you to do your move, and regardless of all this, Catching a sword at the tsuba when it's full speed, do it on a fifth dan kendo. Do it on this man here. Check it out. This is or uh, anything that can give them an opportunity to strike. Yeah. Almost strikes him in and gets his okay, now I want you to do it on that man. Catch it and then do all your turning and twisting, like for example in this clip here. Or unarmed movement against an attacker with a sword. <clears throat> so when he comes in from Joran no Kamai, the most important thing is for me to get out of the way of this portion of the blade, okay? Because this is the most powerful cutting instrument for him and as far as his leverage goes. And I want to try to enter in, okay, and maybe use my, my footwork in order to stay and get control of this area, okay? All right, getting out of the getting out of the way at the correct time. Okay, if you can control this this side, that's best. Okay. <clears throat> yes, do it on a master an eighth dan kendo. Actually, you don't even need an eighth dan kendo. Eighth Q kendo, more than enough. Defend against someone with two swords. Honestly, in martial arts, is one thing, some martial arts, one thing I hate is when people let you do all your moves. Look at that. He's completely ignoring a very basic concept taught that you learn in Hima, in Kendo, and even in Olympic fencing for crying out loud. It's the concept of tempo. There aren't, you, you, you can only do a certain amount of things before the opponent retaliates or does something to you. You can't do all of that. That's like 
time frozen, completely time frozen, and you're doing all your little moves and showing off all your, and that's not even controlling anything. Now look at this one here, this clip of the two opponents, how to fight two opponents. Apart from the fact that I think the first one would have already chopped your hand, but apart from, from that, why is the guy at the bottom just looking? Why is he staring at you? Why is he not doing anything? It's quite clear. This move only works on someone who doesn't want to hit you. And the other guy, while you started moving around like that, would have easily chopped you in pieces. Easily chopped you in pieces. Now, Howcast, a channel with 5 million subscribers. Please, don't call this... Who is what? A Kenjutsu expert? I'm even confused because he says he's a Kenjutsu expert. He says he, he, he knows Yaido. And then I go to the page and it's ninjutsu all over the place. I, I'm really starting to get confused here. I don't even know what this man teaches. Don't feature him. Feature Matt Easton from Scholar Gladiatoria, please. Or find an equivalent of Matt Easton, but Japanese, like Matto Easton. So this ne, Domo, A man who knows how to fight. A man who knows how to spar because he has sparred many times. Just as simple as that. Learn the techniques, apply the techniques. These people just learn techniques. Well, they don't even know if they work because they never even tried them. You can see that with your own eyes. Now, you see, people went ballistic on me when I started touching a katana. When I started touching a katana and I tried a couple of things just to show other principles, mind you, not even to teach techniques. And people went ballistic on me telling me that I'm no expert. I'm, I don't even know how to hold a katana. Regardless of the fact that I have said millions of times on my videos that I am not an expert of martial arts. But then they feature this man here and it says at the bottom that he's an expert and then I and, and I'm expecting to be trained by an expert and learning something because I want to learn how to use a sword since the people tell me that I don't know how to use a sword and at the moment I can't go to a dojo I thought I thought let's just check out on the internet see what I can get this is what I get and then some people tell me you shouldn't talk bad about other other content creators because um, then would you be happy if people did that to you no problem mate no problem. I remember when Good Karma made a few videos where he complained about the things that I was doing. Some people make videos and they praise me. Other people make videos and they show me where I might be wrong in some things. And I'm fine. I'm fine. Of course, I think that these should be done with respect. And if you notice, although I do happen to be some, uh, somewhat sarcastic and whatnot in some of my videos, particularly the rants, but please notice that I have not once insulted this man. Okay? I haven't. But I do strongly oppose this sort of martial teaching. I do strongly oppose this sort of martial teaching. If he's not happy with what I said and wants to make a video about it, I have no problem at all. I'm a YouTuber, I stand in front of a camera, I know thousands of people watch my content, and I want to be 100% honest when I think that a video is well made, I'm gonna say it. When I don't think a video or a series of videos, like in this case, is well made, I am gonna say it. This is being coherent. Am I wrong, noble ones? Am I saying something wrong about these videos? Combat needs to be effective. If it doesn't work, you gotta stop teaching it. And I, I refuse to believe that samurai fought like this in feudal Japanese time. You know why? Because when a martial art is just something you do in a dojo three to four times a week just for fun, that's one thing. But when you are on a battlefield and you're about to lose your life and you've got your family at home that you're trying to defend perhaps, or maybe other times you're just a complete arsehole, just like some of some samurai wear, honestly, and you just want to gain as much money as possible, want to kill as many enemies as possible so that you can get money out of it. Some samurai were like this, other samurai were loyal and honorable people. Whatever you are of the two, you still want to make sure that the techniques you use will keep you alive. If they don't work in practice, they're not going to work on the battlefield and you're not going to risk your life just to show off whatever move that you think in your head is going to work. Because those who did died on the battlefield. It's the survival of the strongest. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope I wasn't too redundant or too... What's the word for it? Too Italian. Does that even make sense? I thank you for your time and your patience and of course for your support. I'll see you tomorrow for my next historical video because tomorrow is going to be historical. And I'm going to talk about the Romans by the way, little spoiler. And remember, the Metatron has spread his wings. Goodbye, number ones. Bye, Olive. <laughs>